Hello everyone, I'm back again. In the previous video, I introduced what a rotator is, what it is used for, and an overview of our Wanderer Astro Wanderer rotator. In this video, I'll walk you through the installation of the Wanderer rotator and help you choose the right model of Wanderer rotator. First of all, you need to determine where you will install the rotator and if it is possible to install a rotator. There are many situations that exist here. We will discuss them one by one. The first scenario applies to refracting or catadioptric telescopes that require a field flattener or a focal reducer. Installing a field flattener and a focal reducer is essentially the same process. I'll just refer to the field flattener in the rest of the video for clarity. For refractor telescopes or catadioptric telescopes that need a field flattener, you have two options. The first option is to install the rotator behind the field flattener. If you place the rotator behind the flattener, the advantage is that generally you only need our Wanderer Rotator Mini Version 2, which is the smallest rotator with M54 aperture. This is because most field flattener output threads are around M48 or M54. The Mini Rotator provides sufficient clear aperture. However, it also has an obvious disadvantage, which is that installing the rotator behind the flattener will occupy the back focus. Most flatteners have a back focus of only 55 millimeters. If you also need to install both a filter wheel and an off-axis guider, even though our Wanderer Rotator Mini version 2 is only 10 millimeters thick, you still won't be able to fit the rotator into the back focus. Unless you don't need a filter wheel, like you are using a color camera, or you plan to use a guider scope instead of using an off-axis guider, then you can consider putting the rotator after the flattener. Another point to note is that if your field flattener has a longer back focus, you may think that you have enough space to install the rotator, but maybe it is not the case. Why? Please note that the diameter of the focuser of the off-axis guider is larger than the thickness of the off-axis guider itself. For example, the thickness of the ZWO off-axis guider itself is only 17.5 millimeters, right? And after adding the 5mm tilter ring, it will be 22.5mm, but the diameter of the focuser of the OAG is larger than that. So generally speaking, we need at least an 11mm extension ring between the OAG and the rotator. Otherwise, the OAG's focuser will interfere with the rotator. So start with an existing back focus of 55mm. To this we add an 11mm extension ring and then a 10mm rotator so you will need at least 76 millimeters of back focus to simultaneously install your camera, filter wheel, OAG, and rotator behind the field flattener. So it's important to take into account these dimensions when planning your setup to ensure everything fits together properly. In addition, installing the rotator behind the flattener may cause another potential drawback. Because your field flattener does not rotate with the rotator, if there happens to be some dust on your flattener, the shadows caused by the dust will rotate on the image as you rotate the rotator. This means you might have to reshoot all the flat frames every single time you change the rotator angle, which could cause some unnecessary trouble. The above is the first situation. The second situation is to put the rotator in front of the flattener. Just like this setup next to me, this is the flattener and this is the rotator. The benefit of doing it this way is obvious. You don't need to worry about your back focus. All the equipment and adapters behind the field flattener do not need any modifications. You just need to install the rotator between the field flattener and the focuser. The only drawback is that you need a larger rotator. Most of the field flatteners available on the market today have input threads larger than M54. Some might be M63, larger ones could be M68 or even M92. In this case, the Wanderer Rotator Mini V2 might not meet your needs and you might need an M68 Wanderer Rotator Lite V2 or an M92 Wanderer Rotator Pro V2. If your field flattener's front thread is larger than M54 and you insist on using an M54 rotator, it might cause vignetting or even black edges on full frame cameras. So this is something you need to consider when choosing a rotator model. So what about the third situation? It pertains to Newtonian telescopes such as the Skywatcher 150 PDS. Installing a rotator on a Newtonian can be a bit more troublesome because if you want to do deep sky photography with a Newtonian, you must install an MPCC. But the back focus of the MPCC is generally only 55 millimeters, 
so you must find a way to install the rotator in front of your MPCC. At the moment, the most feasible method is to first attach the rotator directly onto the focuser. Then, you will find that you can insert the MPCC into the rotator, because the 2-inch MPCC has an outer diameter of 50.8 millimeters, which is smaller than the clear aperture of Wanderer Rotator Mini V2. After inserting the MPCC into the rotator, just use special adapters to secure the MPCC onto the rotator. This allows the rotator to rotate the entire MPCC along with the equipment behind it. You can take a look at this picture. Therefore, it is possible to use a rotator with a Newtonian telescope. However, different models of focuses and MPCC might have slightly different installation methods. Users will need to do some research on their own. The fourth situation pertains to some special cases. I may make a separate video to explain some typical solutions. In short, sometimes you might discover that despite the very thin thickness of our Wanderer rotator, the additional back focus or focuser travel you can utilize is still not enough. And there's no way to connect the rotator through conventional threaded adapters. But don't be discouraged, you may still have a chance. We need to refer to what we mentioned in the previous video, the default female threaded adapter on the protruding side of our Wanderer rotator can be easily disassembled by removing several screws on it. After removing the adapter, you can install a custom adapter. This way, it might save you a few millimeters of space. Because if you use a male to male adapter, the flange of the male to male adapter ring has a certain thickness, which generally takes up an additional two to three millimeters of thickness. However, if it is directly connected to the Wanderer rotator with screws forming an integrated design, it will save this part of the thickness. In this case, if you are unsure, you can directly contact our official email. We have handled many customer cases and created many customized solutions. With our rich experience, we can evaluate whether there is a suitable solution to install the CAA for you. You can also visit our official website. On the download page of the website, you can find a PDF file named Wanderer Rotator Series Installation Guide for Different Telescopes. This document also includes instructions on how to install our Wanderer rotators on various common telescopes. You can check if there is an installation guide for your telescope model in the documents, or perhaps the document can serve as a reference for you. There is another situation that was missed in the video recording. Please read the supplement here. In summary, the choice of which Wanderer Rotator model to select depends on several factors, including the type of telescope you have, whether you use a field flattener or a reducer, and other important considerations. Some users might ask right away, I'm using a certain model of telescope, which model of Wanderer Rotator should I use? In this situation, we actually cannot answer because it depends on many factors. You have to tell us whether you're using a reducer or field flattener, whether it's a color camera, whether you have a filter wheel, whether you have an OAG. Only when all information is complete can we provide a relatively accurate response. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please do not forget to subscribe our channel. See you next time.